this video we're going to once again be looking at the SUVAT equations. We're going to solve another example question. Once again we're only going to be considering motion in one dimension. So the question is, a particle is fired directly upwards from the ground with a velocity of 28 meters per second. What is the maximum height reached? That's part A. And part B is how long does the particle take to return to the ground? So in previous questions, we have looked at horizontal motion. We're now looking at something that is moving vertically up and then back down. But essentially it's the same problem and the mass will all be the same because it's still only moving as far as we're concerned in one dimension, just along a straight line, up the line and back down. So the math shouldn't actually be any more difficult than in the past uh, few videos in this series. So let's just say straight away that a key fact we need to do this question is that acceleration due to gravity is well, it's often denoted by g. So I've called it g and it is roughly equal to 9.8 meters per second per second. So what I mean by this and this is very common, g is a universal constant, well it's a constant on earth anyway, so acceleration due to gravity on earth is 9.8 meters per second per second, so anything that is falling towards the earth will accelerate at this rate due to gravity. Its total acceleration might be different because there might be other forces acting on it, there might be forces causing it to accelerate quicker, or there might be forces acting against it causing it to slow down or accelerate at a slower rate anyway. But what gravity is doing to it is causing it to fall at 9.8 meters per second per second. So that's its acceleration. And we're going to need that for this problem. So let's start doing what we always do, draw a diagram. In this problem, it's a very simple diagram. We just say there's the ground, there's the particle on the ground, and we've just shown that its initial velocity is going straight up at 28 meters per second. Now, which of the SUVAT variables do we know? So we always write down what we know and what we don't know. So do we know S, the displacement? Well, that's actually, if you look at question A, we're asked to find its maximum height. That's the same as just saying what's its displacement from its origin, or what is the maximum displacement from its origin before it starts coming back down towards where it started. So that's something we don't know. We do know its initial velocity. We're told that that's 28 meters per second. For this problem, again, if you look at A, we know that its final velocity is zero because that's when it's at the top of its flight before it starts to fall back down. So it'll be shooting up but getting slower and slower and slower because of gravity acting against it until eventually, for an instant, it stops in the air before it starts to fall back down. That's where we're concerned with. We want to know when does it get to that maximum height before it starts to fall back down. So that's when its velocity is zero. Well, we know its acceleration as well is 9.8 because we just said that it's got to be a negative though because of course the particle is moving up in the positive direction so implicitly we've defined the up direction to be positive because we've given it a positive velocity in the up direction so gravity is acting against it trying to pull it down so its acceleration is minus 9.8 so this is actually a deceleration which makes sense because the particle we assume is going to be slowing down until eventually it comes to a stop and starts to fall back down and the time is, well, we're not really given a time and we're not concerned in A with a time. In B, it looks like we do need to calculate a time, but we don't know what that is. So that's another thing we need to find out. So I've put up here the SUVAT equation we're going to use for part A. If you look at A, we want its maximum height reached. So we need something with S in it, displacement. And what do we know? We know u, v, and a. So it helps if it also has u, v, and a. So that's this equation here. So as I always say in this video, I'm not going to put up all the SUVAT equations on the screen because there are quite a few of them. Hopefully you have them in your notes or you have some reference sheet with them written on. You should hopefully be able to spot this one on there. So for a, we just plug in the information we have into this equation. So we say that zero, that's the initial velocity, sorry, the, that's the final velocity squared. So that's the velocity when it's at the very peak of its motion before it starts to come back down. That's what we're concerned with is equal to 784. So that's 28 squared. So you can do that on a calculator plus two times minus 9.8 times 
s so that's 2 times the acceleration times s which is what we're trying to find out so we just need to rearrange a bit if you rearrange this equation you should get that minus 784 is equal to minus 19.6 s which gives us that s equals 40 meters so that means the particle flew 40 meters up into the air before it started to come back down so now we need to do b for b we look at this second suva equation i have over here v equals u plus a t so what are we um trying to find we're trying to find the time the particle took to return back to the ground from the start point when it was fired now what's important to note here is there's often a symmetry to motion like this so however long the particle takes to get up to the top of its flight so to 40 meters the number we just calculated it'll take the same amount of time to come back down under these conditions so where we're only considering gravity to be acting on it and that's only acceleration it'll always be the case that it'll take the same amount of time to go up as it will to come back down that fact is going to be useful to us in future videos as well so it's worth remembering so if we can calculate the time it takes to get up to 40 meters then all we have to do is times this time by two and then we'll get the time it takes to go up and to come back down so let's calculate the time the particle reaches its peak so we're going to call it t so the particle reaches peak at t which is given by so we just plug into this second equation once again the velocity is zero at its peak so it's 0 equals 28 that's the initial velocity minus 9.8 t rearrange and you'll get minus 28 equals minus 9.8 t so t equals 2.86 seconds so to get up to 40 meters the particle takes 2.86 seconds and always worth pointing out that time should always be positive you can't get a negative time because that means you have moved backwards through time so this is a positive time so we're quite happy this is correct if you've got a negative one you've probably forgotten a sign somewhere or not cancelled a minus sign great so now all we have to do is say that the time the particle takes to hit the ground is 2t because this is the time it takes to go from the ground up to 40 meters it then takes this amount of time again to get back down to the ground so 2 times 2.86 is 5.72 seconds so that is the answer to part b